What is up, thrill seekers? So today, I am bringing to you guys more unpopular opinions. I am going to be doing my top uh, roller coasters at Six Flags New England. I'm going to be ranking all of the coasters there. And we are going to start off at the bottom of the list. Um, and that is with the, um, in my opinion, my least favorite roller coaster I have ever been on. And that is Goliath. Um, and yeah, it's a giant inverted boomerang. Basically just taking a awful SLC, combining it with a boomerang and Bammy got Goliath. But it's even worse than what you're thinking of. Um, most rides either will um, be rough side to side, so you kind of bang your head on the restraints, and then some wooden coasters kind of jackhammer you up and down, um, and that hurts as well. Goliath actually does both of those. So you are going around the ride and you are banging your head on either side and going upside down. So it's like a combination of the two. And I'm usually totally fine on coasters, even like rough ones. For example, the Boss um, is still a great coaster, even though it's rough. And I can, you know, get on it, kind of marathon it if I really wanted to. Um, I have done it like three times in a row in the past. But... Um, but yeah, <laughs> this one, I couldn't. I literally, I got off of it, not that I w would want to, but I got off of it and I literally had to like sit down for a second before we went to the, our next coaster. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a terrible ride. If you want the credit, then go for it. But if you're not really a credit seeker, then I would suggest skipping it. Yeah. Anyways, number 10 is um, an interesting name. It is Gotham City Gauntlet Escape from Arkham Asylum. Yeah. So this might hold the record for longest coaster names. If you actually search up longest coaster name and go to images, I'm pretty sure that a picture of this coaster comes up. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's not a very good coaster. It's a wild mouse, so it's nothing like special or anything along those lines. Um,. And there's no, like, padding or anything. Some wild mouses have, like, padding on the side. So when you hit that side, then it's like, okay, it doesn't hurt. Um, this one did not. So you are going, like, back and forth and back and forth. And it hurt really, really bad. Especially because I rode by myself. Like, there wasn't anybody next to me. So every time we would turn, I think when we would turn left... Um, I slammed into like the little bar right here and it's just a straight just metal bar um, and that hurt really bad so again if you're a big credit seeker then go for it but I if you have to skip some stuff then definitely skip Goliath and skip um, Gotham City Gauntlet Escape from Arkham Asylum so yeah. My next coaster on my list is actually Catwoman's Whip. And this is actually a pretty decent coaster. It's not bad or anything. It's just very small. It's definitely like the kitty coaster in the park. Um, it's very like kid oriented, um, which is good because really this is the only kid oriented coaster in the park. Um, and it's also great because for credit seekers, you can actually get on it. Um, they don't stop you from getting on it at all, um, which is a good thing. Anyways, yeah, Catwoman's Whip, it's okay. It kind of just goes around in turns and stuff. 
Um, if you are not writing next to somebody, then be prepared to slide from one side. Whoa, there goes my piece of paper. Um, from one side to the other because there's no like divider in the middle. Um, so that kind of was unsuspecting. I again rode by myself and I slid and it kind of hurt a little bit. But once I knew that that was happening, um, I was prepared for it. So it was, it's, it's an okay coaster. I mean, it's, it's a good kitty coaster. My next coaster on my list is Thunderbolt, which is their wooden coaster. It's a pretty old wooden coaster. Um, so old, in fact, that they can, I think, only run one train on it. I don't think there's like a block section. Um, which is kind of interesting. So they were only running one train when I was there. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe they can run multiple trains, but I didn't see any drive tires or any like um, friction uh, air pressurized brakes on the brake run. There was only just like kind of a piece of wood that um, two fins on the bottom of the car hit. Um, but it wouldn't like completely stop it or anything. It would kind of just slow it down enough where the station would stop it. So um, I don't think it's able to run two trains. That's how old it is. Um, and it definitely shows in the ride experience. Um, there's, it's really just bumpy. There's not like insanely rough spots like throughout the coaster. There is one that I know of and um, I can't really pinpoint it where, like pinpoint where it is in my head, um, but there is definitely a super rough spot. Doesn't give too much air time, at least when I wrote it, I wrote it in the front row because um, there is assigned seating on this coaster, just, just Thunderbolt has assigned seating. Um, but I ended up getting the front, so I didn't really get much air time, and it was pretty rough, but I mean, I guess I just got a bad ride on it. I'll try it again next time I go. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's Thunderbolt. It's okay. Nothing too special. The next coaster is the Boomerang, which is flashback. Yes, there are two Boomerangs. There's a giant inverted Boomerang, and there is a normal Boomerang. Um, the normal Boomerang is actually not called Boomerang, like most Boomerangs are called. Um, anyways, flashback is okay. It's nothing great. It's just a Boomerang. It's honestly one of my lower tier Boomerangs. Um, just because of, I guess, the setting. You do get some decent views of Wicked Cyclone, um, which is pretty much right next to it, but it's just an unnecessary ride. There's nothing, like, there's no point for it being there. It's still okay. Um, I mean, again, it, it made it to seven on my list, so it's not an awful ride or anything. It's just kind of unnecessary. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's flashback. It's, eh. <laughs> And then number six is Riddler's Revenge. I think it's actually called the Riddler Revenge, which is interesting, but the sign on, at the front, I think says Riddler's Revenge. I'm not 100% sure, um, but on the Six Fogs app, it just said the Riddler, and then trademark, and then revenge. So it's weird. Anyways, um, this is the SLC in the park, and I didn't find it to be that bad. It was definitely bumpy, a borderline rough, but it didn't jack or hammer you up and down more side to side. And because it has more of like vest restraints, um, it didn't actually hurt. Um, it kind of just, it wiggled you, but I couldn't, there was nothing for my head to hit, which is very good. I would assume that it's more on the higher tier in terms of SLCs just because of the restraints. But it was actually kind of a fun ride. There were definitely lots of um, foot chopper moments, which I liked. And yeah, overall, it's, it was not bad. Number five is the Joker. Getting into my top five with uh, the Joker free fly coaster. It's just a normal free fly clone. And I actually got a very good ride on it. I didn't really get many flips, but my... Uh, my preferences are more of a graceful ride versus like super intense flipping, all of that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes I'll get those rides on other, um, other uh, 
free fly coasters and I don't really like those rides. I consider that a bad ride versus many people say, oh, I got 10, like not 10, but like four flips. That's a good ride, you know? Um, but I got a pretty good ride on it in terms of my standards. It wasn't like rough in term, well, not rough, but like it wasn't crazy in terms of like going back and forth and back and forth. And it's cool because you can see Harley Quinn's Finsanity, which is their um, pendulum ride. It kind of goes right up next to it, which is cool because when you're on Harley Quinn, you can see the Joker. And when you're on the Joker, you can see um, Harley Quinn, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty good coaster, um, but there are definitely ones better at the park. So here is my more controversial opinion. This is Pandemonium. I actually really, really like Pandemonium clones just because of course the spinning aspect is fun, um, but also because uh, there is actually a lot, a deep, not a lot, but like some airtime towards the end kind of goes through a mid course and off of that mid course it really like ejects, not ejects, but like flowjects you out of your seat, I guess. Um, and you get some nice flowjector airtime and then you dip down into a little airtime hill, which again gives you some nice flowjector. And overall, it's actually a really good family coaster. Um, it did make it to four on my list, which kind of does tell you something about the park when a pandemonium is number four. Um, but it does just barely edge out um, the Joker, at least on my list. So, yeah, I mean, it has some decent airtime, but it's nothing too special. It's still a very good coaster. Now getting into the top three, and these are really where the coasters start to get um, good borderline greats, and of course the number one is great. Um, number three is Batman the Dark Knight, which is their B&M Floorless Coaster. It's actually a very good coaster. I have pretty much no complaints about it. It's very smooth except for the end. The interlocking corkscrews um, do provide a little bit of head banging, but overall it's a pretty smooth um, B&M uh, floorless coaster, which is very good. And it does have kind of a unique and funky layout. Of course it has, I think it does it either have an Immelman or a dive loop, one of the two. Um, but it also goes through its own loop, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good B&M floorless, really no complaints about it. Obviously it's a B&M floorless, so it's not going to be super high up on my list. Um, and it is a little tiny bit rough towards the end, um, but it's still very good for what it is. Number two is Wicked Cyclone. So if you know anything about my preferences, it is that I am not, I mean, I love RMC, but I'm not like the biggest fan of RMCs. Um, I like floater and flowjector airtime a lot more than ejector airtime, and really super strong ejector airtime, while lots of coaster enthusiasts are like, whoa, that's super awesome when it has lots of little bunny hills, you know, that it goes through pretty fast. That's really not my cup of tea. I look at it and say, it's, I mean, it's fun, but it's not great. But the drop is great, it's super smooth, um, and just overall it's a fun coaster. The, um, the inversions were really good, so that's good. And I'm not really like, hating on it, I'm just saying it's a little bit overhyped, at least in my opinion. Um, but it did still make it into the top two coasters, so uh, you know that it is still a very good ride. Um, it did disappoint me a little bit just because I kind of forgot that my preferences were um, were the way they are and lots of people were like kind of switching it out with Superman the ride um, in terms of like which one was number one. So it was like, oh, you know, it must be almost as good as Superman the ride and it was nowhere close to as good as Superman the ride, at least in my opinion. 
Um, but anyways, moving on to number one is Superman the Ride. So um, it's a very, very good coaster. It is an intimate mega coaster, uh, which means that it is in the 200 foot range. Not 100% sure exactly how tall it is, um, but it's a little, I think it's around 230. Um, I'm not 100% sure though. You do get amazing views of the river, um, which is super awesome. It like just goes right next to the river, um, at least the lift hill. Um, and then the drop is super good. It's not the steepest drop in the world, but especially in the back um, or towards the back, it does give some awesome air time. Uh, it is stadium style seating, um, just so that you guys know, which means that the front row of every car is a little bit lower than the back row. So if you are sitting like, for example, in the second to back row, then really you won't see anything other than just um, the car in front of you. Um, but if you're sitting in the back row, then you'll be a little bit above or um, the a better analogy is the front row gives great views, but then the second row, because you can kind of see over the people in the front row, also gives great views. Um, so that's definitely a plus. You see stadium style seating on a lot of dive coasters and I think um, Iron Rattler and, um, and New Texas Giant also have stadium style seating. I don't really prefer one, but I was just like letting you guys know um, that it does have stadium style seating. But back to the actual coaster itself, it is awesome. It gives amazing flow ejector airtime. The restraints I kind of wish were a little bit different. It would be great if they were like T-bars like you see on Millennium Force, um, but it's still great. I didn't have too much of an issue with the restraints. Um, and yeah, overall, it's a great ride, great airtime all the way through, and it's, of course, incredibly smooth. So, yeah, I love Superman the Ride. Something also to note is that Superman the Ride was actually my 100th roller coaster, which I'm super happy that I made that my 100th and not, like, Wicked Cyclone or any of the other coasters. Um, but yeah, that's really my list. Something that I do have to complain about with this park is just that their coaster selection isn't amazing. Um, they have some great coasters, like their top three are very good. Superman the Ride is amazing, um, and Wicked Cyclone and uh, Batman the Dark Knight are both very good. Um, and of course they have, you know, Pandemonium and The Joker, which are, of whoa, of course, both clones. But it is kind of disappointing because they have like their top two and then the rest of the coasters are kind of trash in my opinion. Of course, they have two boomerangs. One of them is the worst roller coaster that I have ever been on. They have a whole bunch of clones. They have an SLC. Um, they have a terrible wild mouse. Like they don't really have any other good coasters. Um, like other parks where, you know, they'll have their top three. For example, um, Iron Rattler, um, Wonder Woman, and Superman the Ride. But then they'll have a good lineup of supporting coasters. For example, um, Poltergeist, Goliath, um, you know, like those, those kind of coasters. This just doesn't really have a good supporting lineup, in my opinion. So... Yeah, that's kind of my only complaint in terms of the roller coasters at the park. But it's still a great park, of course, like I said, with the great top three. And yeah, that's my list of ranking every single roller coaster at Six Flags New England. I will be making another one for Six Flags St. Louis, as well as Six Flags Magic Mountain, Knott's Berry Farm, King's Dominion, and Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Um, those are... I am going to in the near future um, and actually you'll probably already have seen the Six Flags over Texas vlog so I'll link that right there. I will also link the Six Flags New England vlog right up there in the corner right right there. Yeah. 
yeah and um anyways that's going to be it for this video so again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed if you did smash the thumbs up button and i will see you all next time peace out